but it's a season of giving, it's a season of inflation, and there's this chaos in the world. Jesus is not moved. The kingdom is not moved. The kingdom cannot be shaken. You are receiving the kingdom, the Bible says. They cannot be shaken. The world will be shaken. Interest rates will be shaken. Inflation will be shaken. But he is not shaken. I thought about this this morning. I wasn't planning to get up here, but thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah, preacher, preacher. Yeah. I was thinking this morning about Jesus feeding the 5,000. And it says, When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them, and healed their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him, saying, This is a deserted place. Oh, that feels like this year. This is a deserted place. And the hour is, is already late. Send the multitudes away. But then they go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Everyone has felt like this. We have here only five loaves and two fish. There's 5,000 and Jesus says, go feed them. And it's a natural response to only look at what's in our hand to meet a need that Jesus said is so beyond our own ability. Yeah, okay, good. We only have five loaves and two fish. In other words, we lack, we don't have enough. He said, bring them to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass and he took the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, see, he wasn't looking to earthly natural things. Looking to heaven, the, the natural source. That should be our natural source, not just supernatural. That should be our natural source. Looking to heaven and he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples and the disciples gave to the multitudes so they ate and were filled and they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments that remained. What I was dwelling on this morning, obviously the blessing which was spoken a lot about, he blessed that which he had in his hand. It didn't look like much, but it shows that God is able to take your small amount and multiply it. But what I saw and was dwelling on this morning, and interestingly I can see the bread on the table here, the multiplication didn't happen until the breaking. As long as it remained in the hole, it would have remained the hole. It would have only fed that who had it in their hands. The multiplication happened in the breaking. And during this time of pressure and inflation and chaos and natural things we all got to deal with, the temptation of the natural man is to hold everything and keep what we have as the whole. But as long as it is kept as the whole, you will not receive the supernatural multiplication of the blessing. The way that the blessing of God operates is in the giving is in the tearing, is in the breaking of bread, and it is proof by Jesus' own body, if his body was not broken, you and I would not be here. But because his body was broken, because his body was given, he is then able to give his spirit to all who would believe and call on his name. Jesus exercised the same principle with his own flesh that he did with the, the, the fish and the five loaves. Unless, and then we have to take that, look at it, look at our hole, and don't be tempted to withhold from the Lord what belongs to him. Because pressure makes people do dumb stuff. But we are beyond dumb stuff. We are a people of faith, we are a people of the supernatural, we are people who understand who our God is and that he's our supply in all things. So as a, most of it's giving online now, so this is just a bit of a rev up for you giving for, for the rest of the year. But 
don't be tempted to withhold the whole. And understand when you break from the whole and give it to God is when the supernatural multiplication and what you have may be small, but it can feed thousands. So as you give this morning or as you give during the week or previously, understand if you've broken off from the whole, expect the supernatural to break out in your life. So that the resurrected person, the one that Jesus died for, can come out. If you don't get baptised, there's no witness, there's no testimony that God's done anything for you. You don't believe it. But that's why it's critical. Because if you can believe, all things are possible. God works out of believing. He, but what you believe happens, good or bad. And then you give the witness to it by what you say. So when you get up in the morning, you can... <laughs> you know, and you look at yourself and you say, yes, it's true. That thing is there. You know? <laughs> You look at it and oh no, and you just let it have it. I'm a conqueror. And so I've got this song and, I, and I'm seated in heavenly places with him. I'm not on my own. This is not my effort. He's with me. We heard the trucks, mate. They're, they're pumping it out like a wind. <laughs> beep, beep. I'm a conqueror. They're upsetting our service. Be a bit, I'm a conqueror. It doesn't matter. You see, the words are true. For the kingdom of God is where? Within me. This is just, this is basic Christianity 101, but I don't think, I think when we get a hold of it, that's the rapture. We're out of here. We've got a hold of this thing. And man, we're not, you're not going to stick around here when you've got this as a, as a revelation that's really, lit. just, wow, for the kingdom of God is within me. I know no defeat, only victory. That's the eternal optimist. That's the person that everybody says, you're unrealistic. That's the person everybody says to you, oh, no, he's just off his rocker. So we've got Rebecca falling around the place like she's drunk and she hasn't drunk. <laughs> Why is that? There's a spirit and there's a spirit. We've got the Holy Spirit. The world's got the alcoholic spirit, which is a manifestation of an, uh, another spirit, which is not of God. I know no defeat. Wow, only victory. For the kingdom of God is within me. I know no defeat, only strength and power. Strength and power. Let's go to Luke chapter 10. In the book of Acts, the children of Israel in Jerusalem, God's people, under Roman dominion, had lost their freedoms. The church had become politically connected to the Roman Empire. There was a working together of church and state. They crucified the very Messiah they are waiting for. And there's all sorts of things about that, but the fact of the matter, they ignorantly did it. Now the thing is, they had never been told. They'd only seen God at work through a man. The culture of that time was there had been many false prophets who'd come forth and said they were messiahs. And this I didn't realize till recently. So Jesus was believed to be another one of these nutters out there in, in the wilderness. And um, the consequences of that is that they were willingly persuaded to crucify him. And so when he was crucified, they thought, well, here's another rat bag, get to do it. It's terrible, isn't it? Yet none of them were able to do the tremendous works he was able to do. But he was just another false messiah because the priesthood are the ones who had the influence of the people. 
your victory is there. And we have to get in front of the mirror, we have to get in the front of the mirror, we have to get in front of the mirror and read it. This is who I am. The Bible says I am more than a conqueror. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Wow! Wow! Isn't that an amazing piece of scripture? I hadn't put that down, but it just flows on, doesn't it? For I am persuaded. What was so great about Abraham that God blessed? He was persuaded that what God had promised, God would perform. He was persuaded. What persuaded him? The word of God. The word of God. And there's all sorts of reasons why we can't. There's all sorts of upsets. There's all sorts of trials. There's all sorts of tribulations. But the fact is, are you going to be heaven on earth or are you going to let earth in heaven? That's what this is all about and what we had on Sunday last and what we can have if we want it is heaven every day. Not so that you're out of your mind, but internally you are really good. Occasionally, when we're having a party at church, you can go out of your mind or in your prayer closet or at home, wherever you want to be. That's on the cards. That is fair. That's good. And that's what the Lord wants. But we're to live like we're the people that the Bible says we are. And I just, I, I just feel that this is such an important thing this morning for us to realize this. The songs that we sing on Sunday, generally speaking, are really, really good food for the coming week. We come and what do we do? We break the bread. What do we, we talk about? We need to hear this because we forget it, if you haven't noticed. And this is not stuff I want to forget. And this song, I don't even know how old it is. But it's wonderful. And so I can say that into the mirror when I just feel dreadful. And I can look at myself in the eyeballs and I just want to encourage you guys, I know I've said this before, I just want to encourage, this is how you break through. Whatever, because this is the truth. I'm a conqueror. He's made me more than a conqueror. In Revelation chapter 6 verse 2, we see the white horse with the rider on the white horse going out conquering and to conquer. What a master stroke by the Antichrist or by the Luciferian doctrines to make that look like it's the Antichrist. When right throughout the Bible, white is God's colour. Even in Revelation, shining white, shining bright. Conquering and to conquer. Who are the conquerors? We sing about revival. What does that conquer? See, this is it. This is a war song. That song is a war song. I want revival. I don't want to be content with what we've got. I want this place to be full and heaps of them. All around the countryside, full of people singing about revival who are conquerors. Because that's what it says. You're a conqueror. And then I say, what's that? I'm the witness to the word of God. To the spirits of darkness that are trying to break me down. I'm a conqueror. I'm victorious. Doesn't matter what you're feeling like. Because this is greater. Greater is he in you than he who is in the world. And this is the world's lot. It's really sad. I'm reigning with Jesus, Romans 5.17, Revelation 5.10. We're with him. I'm seated in heavenly places, Ephesians 1.18, Ephesians 2 verse 6. As far as God is concerned, he's raised us up with him in, in the waters of baptism. It's so significant. People just don't realize, wow, baptism really means something. What does it mean? 
that in a fraction of revelation, you have enough ability to say, yes, God, and then get buried, get rid of the old ring. Who's going to make it? Pardon? Pardon? Yeah. You. Ooh. But I want to come to church on Sunday and have, have a holy blessing of the Holy Spirit. Fantastic. But he said, you, you, you make it happen by the choice of what you say. This is near to you as the words that you say. Where is it? Even in your mouth. Well, I've just sung about here. I'm a conqueror. Well, if we go to Revelation chapter 6, verse 2, there's a lot, of, not a lot of places in the Bible where this is actually spoken about. Conquer. Let's have a look at a couple of places. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 7. Well, I've got that one wrong, haven't I? Romans 8, yes. Somewhere in here, it talks about us being conquerors. And I just can't see it. And it's not that scripture. It's not 18. 28, is it? 37. Yeah, that's it. Yet in all these things we are more than what? Who shall separate us, verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Here's the stuff. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Verse 37, yet in all these things we are more than what? What? Okay. Micaiah has on his feet conquerors. Micaiah, do you want to just jump up here? <laughs> Go, Micaiah. Let's just lock him in. Let's go over there. Come on. <laughs> Look at those things, would you? Wow. <laughs> Come on, mate. Show us. <laughs> okay. Conquerors. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Conquerors. Do you realize that Nike wanted to copyright that so nobody else on your planet could do, use that word? Nike? We are more than conquerors. The word in Greek is in the concordance number 3528. It comes from the word nikao, N-I-K-A-O, which means conqueror. I'm victorious. Are you victorious? Mm. So you don't want to say anything in case you get caught out. Because <laughs> you know as well as I do that you, we're not all the time conquering and we're not all the time victorious, but that's not to be our choice. That's a consequence of our inability to perceive perhaps, to believe perhaps, to work perhaps. You know, it's got a whole lot of variables in there. We've got to come to grips with the word of the Lord. Is this the word of the Lord or is it in a book? And thousands of books have been printed which pull this apart. Saved and unsaved because it's the principle and it works. I'm victorious. That word is in I. K E Greek number three five two nine. So if you've got your Nikes on, you're walking on a gospel, aren't you? <laughs> Can't be anything better than that. 
is as close for me as to, to speak it. Our understanding is this, that we have to have times like now, but we have to have a lot of times like last Sunday. But you can't come here every day, and we don't have to do it, so we have to have it on our own with the Lord. But I just love the scripture. What does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. That if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Now that word saved starts the salvation and goes every day until the Lord takes us up or we go home to be with the Lord. So it's not just once, it is a lifetime and a, a whole wonderful thing. God said in Genesis, be fruitful, Adam and Eve, because Sam and Emma are going to be a vessel to bring forth Lillian. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? That he saw in an instant Lillian. He saw in an instant you. Is that important to you? That's, that's the grasp. That's the challenge that the Lord wants us to have. We can have what we had last Sunday every week in a personal way. Or we can be what we know are normally every other day. It's here. It's right within our grasp. So how do I break into this? Well, <laughs> believe it or not, I have a sermon here it is. It's under my Bible. What a terrible place to be. I wake up on Friday morning and I wake up. That was about it. It was just one of those mornings when you get up and you're as fat as a tack and nothing exciting is really going on and it's cold outside because where we are, we're having a wonderful time. We had a week of no rain, which is really unique, but we've had some fog. So it was five degrees, a bit nippy, and, uh, you know, I had to sort of wake up. And then this popped into my heart, and I just love the way the Lord does this with me. He brings out a golden old tune. And I don't know how many of you have ever heard this one, but the words are, I'm a conqueror. I'm victorious. I'm reigning with Jesus. I'm seated in heavenly places with him, with him. For the kingdom of God is within me. I know no defeat, only victory. For the kingdom of God is within me. I know no defeat, only strength and power. Now I didn't feel like that at all. <laughs> and I had a choice to make. Are they going to feel like this, or are they just going to be Joe? Where was the party? Where was Rebecca on the keyboard? Huh? Where were you? I'm out in a cubby house at a Talon, the center of the universe. <laughs> but it was up to me, and this is the clue, guys, this is the thing. It was up to me to t make it the center of my universe. And that's the possibility, and that's the potential, and that's what the Lord wants. I'm a conqueror. I'm victorious. I'm reigning with Jesus. Every day, that's the truth. I'm seated in heavenly places with him. With him. For the kingdom of God is within me. I know no defeat, only victory. For the kingdom of God is within me. I know no defeat, only strength and power. Isn't that better than the 8 o'clock news? And that's what we've got to get into now. Because the Lord sort of just been talking to me over the last couple of weeks. Now with the politics, it's just about over. All, all New, South has to, New South Wales has to do is vote Labour. And we've got a Labour country. And that, to me, was like the end of the world. Well, 
guess what, Joe, you're in it. <laughs> guess what, you're in it. What does that mean? They're not going to be preaching about the gospel. They're not going to be trying to make things happen for the gospel's sake. Who's going to make it happen now? Very so. <laughs> See, you don't understand it, and, and, and we don't understand it, and the people who don't know the Lord don't understand it. God is going to do it and have his way by whatever means are possible. Unfortunately, this is still in a time of peace and a wonderful time and the blessing of the Lord's upon you guys. But even in people who don't understand God, he is still going to have what he wants. And this is the incredible thing that we're dealing with today. I was just singing that last song and I'm just, uh, wow. And I was just trying to think, Lord, how do we go from last week to this week? And what am I, what am I supposed to say, you know? And uh, how many people were blessed last Sunday in a spirit? Hey, how many people sort of hit the deck? Yeah. <laughs> Some people are in a more amazing way than others. <laughs> okay. You can't go to work like that, though, can you? Huh? Me, me, eyes, my eyes, yeah, thank you. And that's, that's for sort of a home party, what the Lord did last Sunday. And it's wonderful, and I don't want to take any ways, anything away from it. But what, hap what happened on Wednesday morning for you? Yay. How are you feeling on Wednesday morning? Yay. Yay? One. How are you feeling on Thursday morning? Okay, two, we went two, yeah, okay. So it's two happy folk. How were you last Sunday when you left here? Pretty good? It was pretty good, wasn't it? Why? Because God manifested. God was here, God was with you on Thursday, and God was with you on Friday, and God was with you on Wednesday. But the thing is, you've got to understand something really, 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 really important. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when we left here finally last Sunday, how many people believed that they were saved? Mm -hmm. Was there an argument? It was, why? Because you have the inner witness and you had the physical witness. And that's what happened. And that's one of the most wonderful things that we can have. And it's not for once in a blue moon. Okay? But we have to come to a really big decision now. And uh, 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 a lot of people sort of don't seem to get to this position that he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So however you felt on Thursday morning, it was up to you to change it back to Sunday morning. Do you understand that? We don't believe this though. We just like to come here and sit down and say, turn it on Lord, Woohoo! we're going to have a party, yay! And then and, uh, his anointing is here to do it, and the servant gets up and ministers, and Beck comes here, and, and she starts bringing in a word, and God says, yeah, I'm going to give it to you today. I'm going to give it to you today. But I'm not going to give it to you on Wednesday. You've got to come and get it. Do you understand that? If you want it, it's there. And, and that's the exciting thing. And so let me read this scripture. What does the Bible say? The word is near you, in your mouth. What's in your mouth? Huh? What's in your mouth? No, it's not. Not all the time. There's a whole lot of stuff that comes out of it. Don't you know. uh, that is the word of faith which we preach. 
We had a physical manifestation of God here on Sunday. And it was wonderful. God, and this is what we call God turned up. <laughs> Otherwise, God hasn't turned up and you're sitting there. Just like now. <laughs> My heart is a godless rejection of the truth. And Lord, your word says your mercy endures to all generations. That every day, God, your mercy is new. And Father God, we cry out to you today that your mercy will come upon us as we intercede and pray for our nation. And we come upon this nation to hear what the Spirit is saying at this time. Father, have mercy on Australia. We stand here as your witness. We stand here as those who have been saved. Those who have knowledge, those who understand now that you are the Lord God Almighty, that you are the one who saves, and you've given us this opportunity this time to be able to pray, to be able to come to you, to repent, to turn to you, God, with all of our hearts, to set our minds and our hearts upon you, God, the mighty deliverer, the mighty healer, the one who can set us free. And so, Father, we pray for this nation. We pray for your church, God, that we will be and rise up to be the people who can testify and witness of your faithfulness to this generation. We pray, God, for the government. We pray for those in authority. And it doesn't matter who they are, Lord, they all need to hear this, God. We pray for those who are in government, who are Christians, who know you, Lord, that they'll be a light into that darkness, Lord. We thank you for the salvation of this land, Lord. We thank you for the outpouring of your spirit upon this land, Lord. But you've called us for a time, and this is our time, Lord. This is the time for Australia to be saved, God. That the church will rise up and speak with one voice. That we as the people of God will be true to you, Lord. And not back off, not back away, but press in, take hold of what the song is saying. We thank you, Lord, for We thank you, Lord, for your ministry to our hearts. And we thank you, Lord, that our hearts can be communicated to this nation by your wonderful spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thanks, Greg, for such a good choice of songs this morning. Hallelujah. Let's be seated. Let's all get comfortable. And let's all go back to sleep. Is that what you want? No. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> I don't feel like preaching. What are you going to do about it? Wake up. Wake up. Yeah. We had a great time last week, didn't we? You still like that? Just come here for a second. Wasn't she terrific last week? You know? Thank you. Could you just testify how you felt after the meeting? Aren't you going home? Oh, I was just in a drunk bubble. I was sitting in the car leaning forward like this because I had to concentrate on the lights. I just, I couldn't think. The boys are talking to me and we're talking about the service and, you know, they're asking me several questions over and over and I, I sometimes just couldn't even hear them. I don't know where I was. I was just drunk. I was just, I felt, I've never been drunk, but... I imagine that's what it would be a bit like. You're just designed how to... I just couldn't concentrate. I was just so blessed. I was so overjoyed. I felt when I walked in the house, I was just floating. Just floating in the anointing and goodness of God. It was beautiful. And I hope you were, you were blessed too. How, how wonderful is Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Now, where have I Up the back there. What are you doing up the back, Sam? <laughs> You're dead now, hey? Let's welcome Sam and Emma. Hey. We're anchored to see you here, but you've got somebody new with you. Isn't that a miracle, hey? A little bit. William Grace, is that right? Yeah, isn't it beautiful? You know, as, as I saw you coming in, and uh, I, I was just really. Blessed to see that I couldn't get up to say hi or give you a hug or anything like that. But I want to say this again. You know, we just don't understand how God operates really. And, and uh, He said this, 
Let us make man in our image. Hmm? So God created man in his own image, male and female, and he created them. And then God said, <laughs> this is so cool, he blessed them, and he said, be fruitful and multiply. Well, congratulations. <laughs>